Good morning. Today is March 24th, 2020, and it's about 11.30 a.m. here in Pasadena, California, and I want to give you another update. Um, lots of news, lots of things happening uh, in the background, things that are significant overall, and things that are significant to um, all sports market and our place uh, in the economy with what's going on here. Um, so here we go. I, I had literally five, six pages of notes. I've tried to consolidate it down here. Uh, there may be a couple of repeats, uh, not in any particular order. So here it goes. First, I'd like to point out that ASM is still live and trading, and although volume is down a bit, which I would expect due to the fact that people are focused elsewhere because there are no sports games being played and they have priorities in their personal lives to deal with, uh, dealing with this uh, virus pandemic, which is totally understandable, but the volume is still quite substantial. I've seen it lower than this in times when games were playing. So probably there's uh, a bit more trading going on because people are at home, but then less trading going on because there's no games. But the bottom line is it's still actively trading. Games are no games. Uh, quarterly dividend is still it takes place regardless of whether games are being played. And this is another huge um, difference between us and gambling and a separating factor, especially right now during this probably once in a lifetime or once in several lifetimes event we're going through here. Uh, so quarterly dividend uh, in four, uh, one week, uh, that's on the 31st. So that is still the case. So here's some general news. Uh, Supreme Court shutting down arguments. Um, this is all, again, you know, argumentation in front of the court. Um, you're going to see more of this in the courts and other, you know, everything that involves a public gathering over looks like the standard now is 10 people. So, uh, yeah, that's going to ripple through everything. Uh, Fed quantitative easing. Uh, now they basically just told everybody we'll print as much money as they want. I've never seen such a breathtaking statement. Uh, they've kind of dodged in the past that there was something going on here other than just simply printing money out of thin air, but I guess they've abandoned any pretense and said we can print as much money as, as we want. I won't get into that. There's a whole, uh, I can do a, a, a whole uh, series of videos on this topic, so I'm going to leave this alone for now, just other, other than to say this is not a solution. Uh, this is just another patch in a long series of patches. They're talking about $5 trillion stimulus package. I mean, that's a quarter of the nominal GDP uh, we're already over a trillion dollars a year uh, deficits. It's going to rise quickly to two or three trillion. It has to. Where is the five trillion going to come from? I mean, we were negative before this happened. So um, anyway, Vegas shut down. I said that would happen, and it has. Uh, Olympics are now shut down. Uh, that's pretty much the marquee. That's the largest thing there in the entire world. I mean, that only comes around every four years, and uh, you know, so. If the Olympics is going to, to, to delay a year, then that speaks for itself. Uh, major cities being shut down, uh, going to see more and more of that. We've had that here in L.A. now for about a week, um, give or take. Not seeing any uh, panic or any kind of that kind of behavior here, just a few things missing on the shelves here and there. But you're going to see more of that. Um, the CM, CME Bitcoin options hit a record low even during all of this. Um, this was a week ago. Even during all of this crazy market activity. So uh, record low in this environment makes no sense to me. That just tells the story that there's really nothing going on here. Because in a volatile environment like this, they should be trading like crazy. It should be an absolutely insane uh, trading volume. Uh, backed. Uh, the deceptively named exchange, no trades for weeks. So here you have uh, these entities still raising. I, I think I saw back a mention of that a couple days ago, hundreds of millions of dollars to throw into these exchanges that basically have no possibility of ever working. So how that can be good fiduciary responsibility in, in this environment, I cannot comprehend how that's taken place. Um, Esports, now the gambling folks, because they have nothing to do, are coming up with all kinds of sort of ridiculous stuff. But one of the things they are talking about is uh, betting on esports. So there's going to be a lot of problems with that. Um, there's already legal problems with that right from the jump. 
Um, we're going to beat them in that too because um, we already said that we're looking at esports uh, as a valid extension of the sports world and investing in esports rather than betting on, on esports. And in fact, because there's so much investment going into esports, um, this is a proposition that's going to get a lot of, of traction when we start talking about um, being able to invest in esports. It's already a very hot sector, and I have a lot of contacts uh, in that space already, and they're growing from, uh, from the LinkedIn, uh, clicked in farming operation, which I'll get to that in a second. So uh, Google Grants, so there, there, there's just stuff popping up all over the place in terms of uh, programs and things to assist during this uh, period of time. So uh, it's a good time to get back to Google Grants and see where we are with that if we can't put that into operation for us here during this uh, during this time. We've had it on the um, on the books for a while to get back to this, and I have offers of help from the inside. Uh, these are people that are not getting paid. Uh, this is just volunteer help to uh, to get that going. So I think that's um, I think that's something to do to to look into in the coming weeks as all these things are rolled out because I'm getting lots of emails from uh, from the grant actually from Google Grants program talking about exactly this and of course a lot of other stuff. So the status on the farming is um, 1134 active uh, LinkedIn connections is where I'm at now. That's getting close to double what it was probably three months ago. Um, 386 leads, that's data cards, phone numbers, uh, almost all of them have all of this email addresses, addresses. Very active, um, it's working really well. I'm, I'm getting lots of uh, active reach outs to me now on LinkedIn Messenger uh, conversations in, in various stages. So uh, it's working and it's working very well. And, and as I said, we walked into this environment where, uh, you know, you, you it's like walking into a room full of people that are starving to death and say, hey, would you guys like some food? It's, it's really, uh, the reception is, is excellent. It's better than I expected, quite a bit better actually. Um, and I'm pretty optimistic about these things. So Hero Club C-Suite. So there's a, 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 a large schedule being put together of calls between the various committees and groups um, to have active conversations amongst all of these leaders because everybody's, uh, you know, uh, we're forming a brain tree. That's, that's the purpose of this whole group. The Hero Club is, 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 this is a hero moment. I mean, this whole point is to gather all these business leaders together and brainstorm and work out solutions that everybody can use. So I have three more calls this week. When These are video conference calls, which, by the way, the suggestion for all of you out there that run businesses is make video primary. Uh, make it your primary video tool. Not, not, not audio, not uh, written. Go, go to primary uh, for video and use the other, other uh, audio and, and text as secondary to that. But video should be your first tool. Uh, so three video conferences uh, to discuss um, strategies. And also they're building a resource uh, guide. All of this brain trust is putting together a, a resource guide for the Hero Club um, to, to access programs on local, state, national, and international levels, because there's members of the Hero Club all over the world, uh, to, to you know, give people a resource guide in one place where they can access loans, grants, um, you know, uh, up-to-date information. Uh, it's basically a C-suite briefing, like the President's Daily Brief kind of thing, uh, for people who... Um, are in leadership who need to make decisions and need to know where the resources are to deal with this. So uh, that's what they're doing is they're, they're, they're uh, take, taking all of this conversation and they're turning it into a resource guide. So I'm going to get back to that in a second. We're going to be providing that information uh, to program members. I think it's only fair uh, that we, we include that value that we're receiving and pass it along to people. So it, it will help them in their, um, in their personal lives and their business lives. So that, that's going to be part of the, uh, I'll get to that in just a second. It's going to be resources for, um, uh, yeah. So what I'm doing here, I'm just looking at the notes. There's a lot of stuff here. So the, um, we're, going to call, we're going to put together what we call the, the New Sports Economy um, Briefing. Okay, that's just kind of a working title. Uh, it may change it to something else, but right now we're, calling it the New Sports Economy Briefing. And some of the stuff that goes into that is going to be this, um, 
coronavirus uh, resource guide, but there's going to be other things in there that pertain to, uh, you know, our whole proposition of being a rescue operation for sports. This is not a joke. This is not a marketing ploy. This is not some kind of talking points thing. This is very serious. At this point, uh, we see, and, and just my watching the roughly 400, uh, you know, the roughly there's now, uh, I have 1,100, yeah, almost 400 leads. So those conversations now, I see the, their, their chatter between them, their, their um, other members of their company and other members of the public and, and their struggles and all the things they're going through. So, um, yeah, the, the struggle is very real. So as we've said in the past, the you know, needs get done uh, and, and, and the sports industry is in need of a vast rescue operation. Um, on every possible level, and that's what I'm seeing in the uh, in the conversations. Which, of course, you I mean, the games all stop, so it's going to ripple through through all of it. So these resources, um, uh, okay. So the resource guide will be for individuals, businesses, nonprofits, regardless of where you are. So be clear about that. The other part is going to be the um, you know the startup guide or restart guide or the what we're going to be calling the new sports economy league startup kit. Okay. So we want to offer, we need to package up everything that we're doing here and offer it as a, basically as a product. So that's, that's part of what's going on in the background. I have a little bit more notes on that here in a second, but cover a couple other things first. So Jeff Hazlett, who's the uh, director of the Hero Club and the C-Suite Network, uh, he, is, uh, he spoke to, um, actually, he is going to speak to uh, Governor Newsom California Governor Newsom. He's got an interview coming. Um, he mentioned that to us on the last uh, strategy call because California is the largest economy uh, in the in the country and it's the uh, fifth largest economy in the world or fourth, fourth or fifth. I forget one of those two. Uh, so he that w that's an excellent conversation for for us to have an interview to have as a resource for all of our members. So. Um, I'm going to contact now. Once that happens, it ha, you know, once the interview comes comes out, I'll, I'll post it. Um, but I'm going to talk to Jeff about um, uh, see if he can arrange for us to at least put ASM I, put the ASM ID in front of governor in front of the governor here. So, um, but I won't even ask until. So you, what you're going to see because I know there's skeptics out there. So what you're going to see is you're going to see the the Newsom interview, and when that happens, I'm going to reach out to Jeff, and then I'll let everybody know know what happens. You're not going to see any daily fantasy gambling or any other IPOs like that anytime soon. Uh, cheater, reverse IPO or otherwise, it, it's simply not going to happen. The capital markets aren't there. The demand is not there for gambling. Um, the access is not even going to be there uh, for a while. Um, you're going to see absolute crushing of, of lots of elements of the gambling space. Uh, there will be... There will be... Uh, there will be massive casualties in this space, mark my words. So we're going to look at um, in the bylaws, as you recall, we haven't formed the board and advisors and all the rest of that because that's, uh, I mean, I've explained why it hasn't happened, but it needs to happen. It needs to happen pretty soon. So that's part of the um, the discussion about the advisors, okay, and all the, the, the things we put out, the contests we put out for advisors, all of that is part of the formalizing of uh, Crystal World Holdings, and which is the owner of everything, and the transition away from me being as the sole default director, you know, the sole, because that's that's all it is. I'm just the default, you know, when you form a company, there's one director, the person that formed it, and then you, you build the board and all that. So um, so that's what we need to do. And uh, look, at, we, we talked some time ago about making it a B Corp. So I've talked to Alfred about that. Um, in the in the creation of the bylaws and all of that, so we're going to look in that look at that again because I'm pretty sure we're going to go that direction. So the nonprofit, of course, is self-stating, right? The nonprofit's a nonprofit to serve the its purpose now is, which is it's done and is doing build the market, expose the concept, then uh, it goes and be, it becomes the the educational side and nonprofit educational arm. And then it, the ASM model becomes a for-profit entity which lives on, on Crystal World Holdings. So that entity, um, we want to talk about, about formatting it as a B Corp, which is a, 
look that up. We'll, we'll get into more detail on that. So nonprofit New Sports Economy Institute and then B Corp All Sports Market. Um, figures on the uh, the crash, reputable sources like Goldman are saying on the present track Q2, this is a shocking number, um, but it's probably right. The second quarter annualized GDP is going to be down 30%. Some are saying 50. I don't, I don't think that's right. But I think somewhere between 25 and 30 is, is right. That's uh, many, many times larger than the 2008 crash uh, initial uh, contraction. So this is very severe if this is... Uh, going to be the case. So uh, not to frighten anybody, that's not my style. I don't, but I'm just, this is just reporting of facts, um, you know, that are already out in the market, out uh, reported by, by reputable people like Goldman. Like Goldman or not, I mean, they, they're pretty much the gold standard in, of what gold standards we have left, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, it's a whole nother uh, talk. Boeing and all that. So um, very discouraging, all the things being seen here. So anyway, um, down 30%, that's going to hurt. Uh, but here's the thing. In times like this, these are empires are built. Um, you know, there's always opportunity in, in these kinds of chaotic things. And, and, and I don't, I don't like that. I'm not saying be opportunistic. You know, I'm not, I didn't create this situation, but we're walking into a moment that because of all that we've done and the conditions of things that our product is, is a need and we can position it as a need, not as some kind of uh, an accessory. And it's not trying to rework the, the talking points to fit the day, the day's news. I mean, it, it which we've been saying this for a long time. I, I personally have been saying for about 15 years that this is an economic solution for the economy. It's, I'm not singing a different song. It just so happens that we're the moment in time appears to be here where we, we walk out in the entire uh, sports market place is, is, is in emergency. Uh, so rescue operations everywhere you look. Uh, yeah, so Governor Newsom, um, a couple things I missed here. I skipped over a couple things. Uh, 60 days. I think if you're, if you're thinking this is going to last anything less than 60 days, it's foolishness. Um, the leading edge of the problem is, uh, and the solution is China. So just look at where, where, where they are in the timeline. Um, we're actually behind Italy, <laughs> unfortunately. I don't think it's going to get that bad everywhere, but I think in some places, unfortunately, it's going to get very bad. Um, so 60 days. And again, that's where the Treasury Department is looking at the staging of payments. So they're not going to give any money away. They don't have to, believe me, especially not this administration. So they are going to do the bare minimum necessary. So if they're telling everybody is 60 days, you really need to put your head there. Um, for us, that's a 60 day ground stop on sports, which is just an incre incredible opportunity for us to get the message out. Um, PR help, we're going to get that from everywhere we need it. I've got plenty of, plenty of contacts in, in that space to, to once we get our uh, league um, deals signed and, and we can start marketing that, which I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, we actually are at and going to draft to terms on the first one um, right now. Uh, so to term sheet. All right. So um, also, I will be. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look at what we can contribute to these weekly conversations in terms of um, making offers for resources available. I'm not sure what we can do right now. I've. I, I have offered to just give a free hundred. Uh, share common share grant to anybody who asks the same thing I've done with the hero club from day one beyond that if we learn something or get some new um, resources that I think would be beneficial for that entire community then we're gonna we're gonna become part of the program there's an open invitation to, to submit content to the whole network so I look at doing that if I think we can provide something that will be helpful um, Okay, so Boeing, uh, gold standard of manufacturing in the United States, 100 years old, um, really, really sad situation. What I've dug deeper into the Boeing story, and it looks like a standard case of separating the engineering department from the accounting, turning it into just a black box, thinking you can build airplanes like a black box and ship off, outsource the parts and outsource the manufacturing and not have clear communication lines between the parts, all of this was to maximize profits and drive this stock price up because that's where we are in capitalism in the United States. 
and uh, the result was the deaths of people, and there would have been many more deaths if, if it wasn't stopped, all because of greed. That's the bottom line, and the, at the end of the day, it looks like that Boeing uh, probably will not die too big to fail, especially given military contracts, but it should probably fail. Um, Boeing should probably no longer exist um, based on what they've done and the lies they've told and, uh, and the deaths they've caused, um, which is just, we really need to get back to doing things right. Um, there's even talk of GE being uh, a Ponzi scheme now, which is General Electric, which is just... All right, so um, we received the GuideStar Platinum 2020 seal, um, completed all the disclosure documents and everything for that. Uh, so that's all the, the Platinum seal is there. You can, you can click on the All Sports Market homepage and see that that's done. Uh, current SRI. So I mentioned that we would be an excellent product right now in the marketplace for uh, hedging all these risks that are just system wide. Uh, I, I billions, literally, I, I can say confidently that we would have preserved billions of dollars in capital if the SRI was trading right now. So uh, we have several prosecutions that are um, due office actions, which means we're in various stages of prosecuting the SRI, because remember, there's two products. There's the ASM product, the SRI product. Uh, we're going to include these discussions of coronavirus in those prosecutions because the case is being made in a just gargantuan monster way for the product in the market right now. Uh, federal bailouts. Gambling? Not likely. Why? The Kennedy Wire Act. That's why. Um, the whole reason that the gambling operations are in the desert or stuck out in the middle of New Jersey or pretty much pushed to the margins is because the federal government anti-corruption wire act still in place, still being argued by justice department. Nobody's backing off to think that the federal government is going to bail out a bunch of casinos. Now I can see the worker side of it, but if you think the corporate side is going to get some big bailout, don't count on it. Uh, I, there will be definitely friction on that subject because of uh, Sheldon Adelson's greasing the palms of the Trump administration, but at the end of the day, it's not going to get through that Congress. Um, I, I, to, to, to try to say that the gambling industry should be saved during a period of uh, health crisis is absolutely insane. Uh, the political will, will, will not only not be there, it'll be negative if you can bring that up. Um, okay, so... Those people that choose not to be part of helping us keep things going at this point, um, I'm not going to make the same mistake that was made last time. Look, everybody's in the same boat here. Uh, you know, everybody's going to have to decide what's important, what's not important. And there isn't going to be a return to the inner core of this business or to any sort of a relationship with me or the team if you walk off now, okay? I, I, it's hard to make such a hard statement, but because these are such severe times and everybody's going to have to make hard choices, um, you don't get to come back around in a week, a month, a day, a year, whenever it is, and it will happen. It's happened before and it will happen again. And I feel pretty confident at this point that this is the last round. This is round three. So there was a purge the first time around when everybody ran for the hills in 2008. There's been another purge here in 2000, uh, well, it was really 2009, 10 years later, 2019, 2020. If you walk off, if you turn your back, if you don't provide assistance when we ask, because we, if we ask, it means that we need it, okay? Um, I understand some people can't, but an awful lot of people can. Um, I have things to pay. Things that don't have to be paid won't be paid. They'll be delayed. I'm, I'm putting into the system all the delays that are available through vendor relationships and through government because they're going to be government programs that I believe we're going to have access to just like everybody else. But if there's needs, there's needs. So I'm not saying you're obligated automatically. I'm just saying that there is a clear record who is here and who is not here and who comes and who goes. And uh, I made the mistake this last cycle uh, five years ago of allowing some people to return who either left uh, and caused problems or never helped or, uh, you know, I was way too lenient in allowing the return of 
of people from the past that those days are finished. That won't happen again. Um, if you walk, you will stay out. There will be no return when the crowd is clapping and the news coverage, because we've done it several times. Don't say it won't happen because you know that we've done it before. We know how to get the media coverage. All we need to do is get one deal. And I'm telling you that story will wrap the globe. So if you're sitting on the sidelines and either griping, grumbling, or not helping or whatever, and then you suddenly decide when we're headline news that you want to be back part of it, you're going to find the door closed and locked. Okay, that's how it works. So deadline March 31st, 2020 for the stakeholder survey, no exceptions. If you don't produce the survey and you want to be part of the decision making for the new all sports market going forward, you know, the final version of it that we've been working so hard for, and you don't return that, you will not be part of that discussion and your, your voice will not be heard, bottom line. Okay. So, a couple things here in the close to think about. 1918, 19, 1918 through 20, Spanish flu, okay, 100 years ago. 1919 stock market crash. 1919 block, black Sox scandal, okay. Flu, stock market crash, gambling scandal, okay, all 100 years ago. But what followed? What followed was the roaring 20s, okay. So the new sports economy, in my view, that idea means more right now than it has ever meant since the very first time we used those words more than 15 years ago. This is what we're selling, okay? Spanish, it's a crazy combination of things here to see this all converging, but it's the case. Exactly 100 years ago, Spanish flu, stock market crash, Black Sox gambling scandal. What followed? Roaring 20s, okay? If you guys remember from the first time back in Costa Rica when we were putting together the Aguilera Super Bowl commercial idea with Ace, it was themed around what? Roaring 20s or that kind of the 30s and all of that. That kind of renaissance. I have never stopped thinking that, okay? I just, it looks to me like that moment is landed in our laps here. All we need to do is get deals out to finance leagues who need it, which are everywhere now, publicize that, and all of that vision will come together. I, it's, it's, I know that the story of rescue is going to get covered, and I know how to get it covered. Please hear me. This is the job. Okay, so the farm is working great. I have some amazing contacts in that group that are writing me back and forth. None of these people are, I mean, I can't say none, it's probably a handful, but almost all of these people are, are top level executives, team owners, league owners. They want to hear what I have to say. So I just need to finish the video. Um, that's the piece I'm missing because I need to consolidate the, um, the value proposition for them in a video because that everybody is overwhelmed and and even to get your attention right now in this environment needs to I need to make it very short intense to the point and then we 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 put them into a lead form and then that becomes the back end uh, uh, sorting through to get the deals okay um, there's going uh, empires uh, you know we I do believe we're in the new sports economy as part of the re the Renaissance I I I'm not changing my tune because it's the same tune. Empires are built during crisis uh, every single time. Look at history. There's going to be a new normal, okay? Everything is not going to go back to the way it was exactly. In fact, I would say it's going to be significantly different. I don't know what that is. Nobody that's being honest is going to say they do, but, but part of the discussion we're having in the brainstorming is trying to figure that out with the Hero Club, C-Suite, and all of that group. Um, those that figure out the new normal build empires. Those that don't figure out the new empire or the new normal are going to be wreckage. That's it. The Common Good by Robert Reich. Okay? If you want to know where I'm coming from philosophically, this is not spirituality. This is just 
philosophy, okay? Raw philosophy, ideas, the most accurate encapsulation of, of how I view the world is, uh, is in that book, okay? Uh, I, it's an incredibly well-written, concise, not very long, intense discussion on the problem as, a, as exists in society today that must be solved in order for things to return to some kind of decent, normal, and for society to be healthy again. Um, the Common Good by Robert Reich. If you want information between these updates, uh, I do believe you're, we will continue to do multiple a week, um, um, as, much, as much communication as is warranted. But if you want to know the up-to-date go to the notice board because in between the uh, these transmitted updates, I do the uh, line by lines of things that I think that are important. So that's where you're, where you're going to find it. The time to distinguish ourselves from everybody else, which where is everybody else? There is no everybody else. <laughs> the entire sports gambling industry is, is, is halted. So um, distinguish ourselves is, is now. Okay, it's a perfect storm right now, right now. We need to, we need to get out and, and scream as loud as we can what we've got, what we're doing. Because it's a need. And that's, the entire global sports community, community is now in need of a rescue operation, which I've said repeatedly. Needs get done. Be a need. Needs get done. Look at toilet paper shortages. <laughs> I mean it. So, uh, the sports league in the entire planet needs a rescue. All right, so what is the output of someone who goes to the lead page and says, yes, I have a league that I want to finance or I want to start? By the way, I'm getting people that are asking me if it's only leagues that are, this is in uh, the farm farming process, is it only leagues that are in active now or leagues that are in development? I got that question for the first time this morning. So that's awesome. So what do you get when you watch the video and go to the form. Uh, you go, you complete the lead generation form, basically the I want to list my team or I have a team or I have a league idea. I want to list my league or I have a league idea I want to finance. Um, you uh, will go to the form and, and complete all the, we're, that's what we're working on right now is the parameters and then that will create a back-end process where some of the team will contact the people and, and, and work through the leads because we're going to get a bunch of them. I, I can see this clearly as it's going to be a stream. So um, we'll create a back-end process to vet them and then qualify them for listing. Um, it will be, I, this is, again is a working name. I'm not sure this is the branding of it, but I think the New Sports Economy League Starter Kit is a good name. The New Sports Economy League Starter Kit. Um, in that would be listing conditions, how we need their game schedules and scores to be reported, and along with ideas on how how they can get brought into you know broadcast their games. This would be where we would put partnerships and things, and even for guerrilla operation, you know how to use uh, Facebook Live, how to use YouTube. I, I actually don't like that I, YouTube since it's not behind a wall. I think YouTube's better, but YouTube uh, Live uh, is would be the standard I would suggest. But you know you can you can put together kind of a guerrilla. Kit, because what I want to actually have happen here is that somebody who who sees this and has a legitimate league startup idea could could put it in front of the public through our market, and if people buy into it and say, "Yeah, I think that's cool," um, then they can support it, like a GoFundMe or a Kickstarter for sports league ideas. That's that's where I'm at. So quite literally, if you have a good idea. That's all you need. You can come to us, and if you can put together the package and you can follow the criteria and pass the criteria, then you can list and you can start a league without having any money or any resources or any partners. We, we can bring all that to the table, bring that entire as a kit. I think that is the magic uh, deliverable at the end of all of this that will A, end up in the news and all of that. Okay, so... And then I just, uh, prior to starting this video, I got a message from Alper that um, it is now in our court to create the first term sheet. Okay, first league, hear me clearly, first league fundraise term sheet. They want to see a term sheet, so we're putting that together now. I'll have more to report when I can.
So that's all there is for now. So whatever support you provide to us, um, and I'm not asking in this video for anything, I'm still assessing where we are and what we can defer and all. I'm doing exactly what you're doing in your personal and business lives. I'm assessing what's really needed versus what doesn't have to be paid. And then um, that will be the forward uh, fundraising that we do will be based upon that. So any contribution that you make to that is going to be in support of everything I'm saying. Okay, it's that's what what we're working on. Um, that's what the that's that's what you're going to be supporting. So I believe that is everything. Um, please please believe me that this is a uh, it's a very very large. I mean, look, it's a once in a millennium generation probably once in a millennium po possibility for us. Uh, I I could have never imagined. Uh, that that the entire sports world would shut down and that a gambling would shut down and um, Olympics would shut down and all these cities would shut down. And um, I know it's scary for a lot of people and all of that, but it really is the moment to get out and show that we have something that's valuable, not novel, not just novel and neat, but actually valuable in the marketplace. Um, so when you support any any of that, um, that's what you're doing through your contributions or through anything, through sweat equity or whatever. That's what you're supporting. Um, and if you do this, you know, if you if you have been uh, a, a previous participant, uh, I'm going to draw a line here because, you know, I I've seen people walk off and and. Look, we can't have that. I mean, it isn't fair. The people that have continued to keep this this. Uh, project going under these difficult circumstances, they they have special rights. I mean, that's just the way the world works, uh, like it or not. So uh, if you haven't contributed to anything in the last 90 days, you're not going to be get part. You're not going to get get any of this information. It isn't fair. Um, you know, we have to work and acquire it. And we have to invest and acquire it. And so um, that's the cutoff. OK, so no participation in the last 90 days. No, no benefit is going to come from this. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the resource kit that will um, that is being compiled through this very large brain trust of of, of well respected CEOs and leaders from all over the world that is going to provide you with per things you can use in your own personal life and in your business life to get through this in the same way that we are. And I will I'm going to provide that to everybody who has at least one time contributed to a program in the last 90 days from the date that I'm making this video. That's the cutoff from, from 90 days until now. And then anybody who does from, from this point forward uh, will, of course, receive those things as long as we publish them. There's a six-month schedule right now with Hero Club, a six-month schedule of these meetings. So they think that, that there's at least six months worth of work to do um, going on through from all of the, what's going to happen over the coming uh, weeks and months. So whatever I get, whatever whatever we compile, whatever we learn internally, um, we'll go out and basically like a briefing, like the president's daily briefing gets in, in the White House. It's a strategy paper. I'm going to do like a president's daily briefing for all sports market and the new sports economy. And the first one will go out on the 1st of, um, of April to, to every program member from 90 days Here's the, again, one contribution minimum in the last uh, 90 days or, of course, forward uh, contributions from here. You will get an ongoing uh, copy of this um, as often as it comes out. I, it may come out every week. It may come out every two weeks. It may be a static, uh, probably a dynamic page makes more sense. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll publish it on a private link that you can access. Um, you know, that all those resources, you'll have access to that as long as the problem is here with us. So uh, stay safe with your family and friends. Please take this um, situation seriously. Um, I don't, it, it's hard to, to, to accurately determine where, where we are here. Um, you know, I do think China is, is the best, you know, provided the reporting is accurate. I'm going to assume that it is, um, you know, enough people have camera phones, enough people are, you know, if, I think are going to correct it if the information is wrong. But I think that's where we are in terms of the leading and trailing edge of the situation. So if you overlay the, the Chinese uh, timeline with ours and you, you look at what happened, you're going to see about where we are and things. So um, take it seriously. Uh, you know, again, I'm just speaking to you as a person, you know, as a 
concerned human, uh, wash your hand. It, it, it sounds so simplistic, but that is how it happens. Um, you know, it, 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 it's through touching something and, and getting and touching your face. And I know everybody's crazy about these masks and stuff, but actually the real problem is your eyes. <laughs> uh, you know, I, it's, it's, I'm not saying that maybe masks don't help a little bit, but um, really where it ends up is coming in through your tear ducts and, you know, touching your eyes and everybody kind of does that. It's really hard to not do that. So, you, um, you know, I know all of the wipes and things seem to be out, but there's a, a you can just get isopropyl alcohol. Some of it has, um, it's green. It's a, some kind of winter green in there. You can mix it up yourself. You don't have to freak out because that stuff is gone. But yeah, keeping your hands clean, especially when you go out in public um, and then not, not touching your face. And obviously somebody that has the, the, the virus sneezing on you or something, that's, that's bad. <laughs> as bad as it gets and keeping your immune system up, which, you know, there's a lot of good information out there on that. The one thing I found that is very helpful is uh, large doses of vitamin C, maybe like 10,000 uh, milligrams a day seems to do a great job. When I, when I would go traveling and I would, I would always, almost always get sick um, uh, in, in especially traveling to Vegas. I mean, that's not making that up. Uh, seemed to get sick every single time I went there. Um, and I don't get sick hardly ever. It's, it's sometimes years will go by, but traveling around, um, you know, getting airplanes and you're always touching stuff and, um, you know, that get taking extra vitamin C, what I, what I do prior to traveling where I did, especially with the heavy schedule, the last year and a half or so, um, was take extra vitamin C before I would take off and then throughout the trip. And that works. And actually it will also work if you start to get sick and you catch it fast enough. Now, I don't know that this works for, for uh, coronavirus, but for all the other things, you get a scratchy feeling in your throat or you think you're about to get sick, um, you, you take a lot of vitamin C, uh, you can slow it down or stop it. So anyway, that's the only you know suggestion I have just person to person. Um, but staying clean, keep your hands clean, keep your hands away from your face is super important. And, and avoiding, you know, Public gatherings, unnecessary public gatherings. Um, that's why sports is going to be so screwed up. Uh, that and the psychology of telling people that they can't accumulate like that or have the space between their chairs is just, it's, it's going to be a lot of, it's going to be a lot to manage coming back from this. So uh, stay safe. Uh, I will update you uh, as often as makes sense. Um, thank you to everyone who has supported us in the past. And of course, those who have and continue to support us through through especially the, you know, the last, I mean, it was difficult from the summertime and it's going to become a few degrees more difficult here before it gets easier. Um, but again, hopefulness, lots of leads, lots of leads, first term sheet being drafted. Now, the second that we can announce that deal, you can be sure we're going to. So stay safe and I will speak with you again uh, soon. Bye now.